Good morning all, and uh, I hope you like my sex computer. Yes, you heard me correctly. This is a sex computer. Yes, I know, it's all a bit silly, isn't it? And it's uh, basically clickbait. Don't worry about the sex bit. I'll come to that later. I'll explain what that's all about. But uh, let's have a look at what's on this breadboard. Um, well, we have a Motorola 6809 microprocessor 40 pins and this is one of these rather nice ceramic um, chips with the little uh, metal lid covering the aperture where the actual chip itself is sitting this will be soldered on it's probably even gold plated the pins almost certainly are gold plated um, and it says bn mill on the top so is that something to do with military spec who knows now this LED here, the green one, looks a bit flickery, but actually it's, uh, to the naked eye, it's flashing on and off um, at about 10 hertz, I suppose. This is a 7555, that is a CMOS 555, 100K pot just to provide the two resistors across uh, 8 and 7 and 7 and 6. And this uh, capacitor here across pins 1 and 2, which sets the timing of the 555 is a 474 so that's 470 nanofarads so what's it doing well it's being clocked at as i say about 10 hertz um this is a microprocessor so all it's going to do is it's going to say oh i better go and fetch an op code from the data bus so here's the data bus up here these eight resistors uh bit seven is actually on the right and so it's pulling in this opcode. Now the microprocessor would normally pull in opcodes from a ROM and they'd all be, well, different. Here it's pulling in the same opcode repeatedly. So it's doing the same thing over and over and over again. I've chosen an opcode that has no operands so that it just reads in the opcode, executes the instruction and then immediately pulls it in again and executes it again. So what this is actually doing is it's running around um, a program which is 65,536 bytes long, um, executing this instruction, which doesn't do very much, it has to be said. And what we're looking at here are the address lines. So what we can see is the microprocessor saying, oh, okay, I must, I've executed the instruction at location, I don't know, zero. I must move on to the next location. And the next location is one. And you can see the count here. Uh, let's count it together. Zero, one, two, three. Zero, one, two, three. Now I'm only looking at the two low order address lines. Uh, this is address A0 on the 6809, A1, A2, A3, and it goes all the way around to A15, which is the uh, maximum numbered address line there. As I say, the data lines are A, uh, D7, D6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, D0. I uh, can't remember what that resistor is. I don't know. I've got pull-ups and pull-downs, which are mostly 1Ks, although I did the data lines in 10Ks. Yep, that's right. The 1Ks are sitting on things like interrupt inputs, uh, active low, so I'm pulling them mostly high. Uh, a couple of things have to be pulled low. Oh, the clock input. Yeah, this is an interesting one because the 6809 was kind of the most advanced 8-bit microprocessor there ever was unfortunately it came too late and it never really got any traction because the z80 had had massive penetration into uh well the home computer and the business computer market at that time the 6502 was also hugely popular so along came the 6809 where everything was sort of ironed out and it was the best 8-bit micro there was and there was really no market left for it um but anyway what i was saying what i was going to say was uh, that um this is a crystal input, so you can put a crystal across these two pins, I think it's 39 and 38, and the load capacitors to ground, and it has an oscillator circuit built in. But if you pull 39 low, which I'm doing through a 1K resistor, I think I tried it with a link, I can't remember what the outcome was, but anyway, you can then use 38 as a clock input. So I'm taking the clock output of my 555, and this is not representative this funny flickering is not representative of what I'm seeing. I'm seeing a proper um, regular pulse train. Uh, so there, there it is. It's being clocked through pin 38 and it's counting through all the addresses. It looks like it's only counting through four addresses and then starting again. But that's because we're not looking at the high order address bits. Let's actually connect 
another lead because I've got a space there for one and we'll see if we can uh, see a three bit count right let's do this live um these are these are rather indistinct in their cathode markings and I think they're wrong I don't know uh I couldn't work it out I was doing this late last night and I was getting confused let's put a 10k resistor now I'm using 10k resistors on the LEDs um, because the data sheet for the 6809 said that it can't source much current. I think it can sync about a milliamp on these address lines, but it can only source about 400 microamps or something. It was something really quite tiny. And I thought, well, I can't use 100 ohms. Oh, what's going on here? I can't use a low value resistor, can I? Because that's not going to uh, be happy doing that. Do you know, that's typical, isn't it? That socket. I can't get the uh, 10k resistor in the hole. Come on, get in. There it is. So I need one more piece of wire and we'll take that to uh, address line A2. Hook that up to my third LED. Oh, it doesn't work. This is this ambiguous direction that these things are. Oh, there we are. All right, so let's count. Let's see if, oh yes, that's doing a full binary count. From zero to eight, seven, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, zero. So yes, if I fitted uh, LEDs to all 16 address lines, um, yes, it would do a 16 bit binary count. Well, that's zero to six, five, five, three, five, 65,535 being the maximum address um, that this microprocessor can address. Now, for those of you who saw me do this um, with the Z80, I put a Z80 on a breadboard, clocked it with a 555, and we watched the address lines count in much the same way. There's a bit of a quirk on the Z80, and that is that on the address bus, you get both ROM addresses and also memory refresh addresses. So it gets in a bit of a mess. This one, I think, is a bit more clean in that only the um, ROM or memory access addresses are appearing on the address line. So we should get a nice clean count on all 16 of those address lines. But let's just take a look at the data lines for a moment. Um, this, as I say, is D7. So we have to read this kind of uh, right to left, which is not the normal way of reading binary. So we've got 0001, because that resistor is put onto the five volt. So in hexadecimal, that is a one. Then we've got 1101, and that's a D. So the instruction we're executing is 1D. We'll take a look at what that is in a moment, but I can tell you it's not a no-op. Now on the Z80, the no-op is 00, zero. So it's very easy to execute a no-op on the Z80 because it's naught. Whereas on this chip, it's 12. So I could have set this to uh, 0, 0, 0, 0001, same pattern there, uh, 0010, zero, zero, because that would make 2, so it would be 1, 2, 12, 12 hexadecimal that is, um, and that would execute no ops, but I found a much more interesting instruction. Right, here is the 6809 instruction set. Now I've um, taken this from Iron Bark Bendigo Latrobe Edu AU. Uh, so apologies for uh, getting that pronounced wrong to the Australian educational establishment uh, that this has come from. There's no copyright notice on this. I can't imagine it's copyright. It's just the 6809 instruction set. Right, let's have a little look through it. Uh, the first page goes down to DEC. Uh, what's DEC? Decimal adjust. No, that's DAA. DEC is probably decrement. COM will be complement. CMP compare all that sort of stuff. Let's look at the second page, exclusive or, oh, exchange registers increment, load, that's a big one. Um, and then we get to no op, and here's no op. Of course, it does nothing, no operation. And the um, operator for that is hexadecimal 12. So yes, I could have used that one. For a while I was using neg, because that's value 40, and that's a very nice easy one to uh, put on the resistors because only one of the bits is high. It's actually uh, 0100000. So I was using that for a while. That just negates um, register A. It actually does a two's complement negation, I think. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. 
a becomes not a plus one. Um, but then I found a much more exciting instruction on the next page, and it is, if I can find it, sex, which is why this is a sex computer. So sex just simply means sine extend b into a. It is, um, oh, now I need to go back to page one, I think. Oh, no, it doesn't actually say on, oh, maybe it does on page one. Yes, yeah, so here we are. It's an inherent mode um, instruction. And I think what they mean by that is that the operand, in other words, what it's operating on, which is registers B and A, is inherent in the instruction itself. It's implied. Uh, I think the PIC calls it implied or something calls it implied. And uh, the instruction is 1D. And so what it does is it sine extends B into A, whatever that might mean. I don't actually know. It doesn't really matter. It's um, two clock cycles. It's one byte. It's 1D. And so this uh, computer is simply reading this instruction 1D. That's the sex instruction. It's sine extending B into A repeatedly. We can't see that, of course, because registers B and A are inside that little chip somewhere. We'll never see that. What we can see is it moving on to the next address in order to pull in the next instruction. And yes, it's really boring. It just keeps pulling in the same one over and over again, 65,536 times. So let's have a little quick look at the uh, data sheet for the MC6809, which is an HMOS high density N channel silicon gate 8 bit microprocessing unit. Uh, the 6809 is a revolutionary high-performance 8-bit microprocessor which supports modern programming techniques such as position independence, re-entrancy, and modular programming. <laughs> Shame it came too late. It did get used. I mean, you do see 6809s in things, but it was a bit late in the day. And I think not long after this came out, um, the 16-bit micros were starting to come out. And so 8-bit really has had its day. Um, so here is uh, the first page which has the pinout and of course that was essential when I was laying this out on breadboard. I needed to know where, for example, VSS and VCC. That's weird. Why do they call it VSS, which means source, which implies MOSFETs, and VCC, which implies collector, <laughs> which implies bipolar? I don't really know. But there's all the uh, lovely address lines all in sequence, A0, A1, and it wraps around to A15 there. D7 working backwards to D0, read, write. Uh, DMA, direct memory access, that I've pulled high because it's active low. I've even pulled reset high. So this doesn't get a reset. And yet, it does seem to reset reasonably well. Let's just power it off, power it on. Oh, it's gone a bit doolally. Oh, that's gone very doolally. Oh, it doesn't like the sex instruction at this time. Let's try again. Oh, there we go. That's counting up in binary again. That's a relief. Um, yeah, so I didn't bother with reset, so it's a bit dodgy. And here is the extal and extal, but this one is e extal, which is external. And as I say, if you pull extal low, then pin 38 becomes uh, an external uh, clock input. So yes, that's that page. Now I'm gonna just print another page of this. Uh, yes, here it is, uh, 6809. This is actually page two, so I didn't have to look far, but this got me a little bit bothered. It says frequency of operation, crystal or external input, um, maximum on the various different types of four megahertz, six megahertz and eight megahertz. But there's also a minimum of 400 kilohertz. So what they're saying is you can't run this any slower than 400 kilohertz. And I've got a feeling there's a note somewhere that says if you try and do it, you may get unexpected results. Well, I'm running this at about 10 hertz and well, it seems to be all right. Now just notice that the sex instruction um, takes two clock cycles, but if I go to here, yes, there's a multiply instruction. And this was really the holy grail of uh, microcontrollers to have a hardware multi, not microcontrollers, I said microcontrollers and I meant microprocessors. Yes, a hardware multiply, and that's actually 3D, sex was 1D, so that would be really easy to change. And this is 11 clock cycles, and that's not surprising. It's only a one byte instruction, 
And what it does is it multiplies A and B together and puts the result in D. Now D is actually A and B sort of used as a 16-bit register, unsigned multiply. So if I change it to 3D, we can get a multiply and it should take 11 clock cycles, which means this should count much more slowly than it's counting with just, oh, what was it for sex? Two clock cycles, yeah. So we see if that counts more slowly. If I change it, I'm gonna do this live because there's nothing like a live demo. Right, so we've got um, 0001, so that's 1D, and I want 3D. So all I've got to do is lift this resistor and move it to there, so it's on pause. Get in there. Now, is that going to take... Oh, that's going a bit doolally. Yeah, that's not really doing what I thought it was going to do. It should be doing repeated hardware multiplies, which take quite a long time. Let's reboot it and hope that... But they take 11 clock cycles each. That's not really doing anything, is it? Can it just multiply A and B together from a cold boot? I'll tell you what, the reset pin is next to the clock pin on this CPU. So if I put reset there and hoik it low, where's low? I'm going to be low, where's low? There's low. Is that going to reset? Doesn't seem very convincing. Yeah, having difficulty getting it to multiply and simply move on to the next instruction. That's not behaving itself at all, is it? Let's try another reboot. No, that's not counting in binary either. So why won't it execute repeated multiply instructions? That LED's gone off funny. I don't know. I can't get it to work. So, no, I can't get it to work. That's not behaving itself. Let's go back to sex because sex worked. Let's put that back on there. Get in there. Yeah, that's counting in binary, isn't it? Well, this microprocessor seems to be much happier with sex than mull. So there it is. There's the um, MC6809 microprocessor put on a breadboard and um, utterly trivialized by forcing it to execute the sex instruction repeatedly. Well, I mean, come on, guys, you put the sex instruction in the instruction set, so you can't blame me for that one. And um, instead of being a high performance microprocessor, it's simply a binary counter. Now, if I put all 16 LEDs on here wrapped around there that would actually look quite good wouldn't it but i'm just a little bit um unsure why it won't do this multiply uh 0011 so that's 3d it's definitely right for the multiply whereas it mul 3d 11 clock cycles one byte no operands no parameters note 9 just says that the carry flag this is the carry bit in the condition code register uh, will be set if B7 is set. So it just copies B7 into the carry flag. But that is not executing the single mul instruction and then just moving on to the next address. It's just not doing it. It's just behaving very strangely. I don't understand. Also, how do you do a hardware multiply of two 8-bit registers the result going back into the same two registers, but it doesn't matter that it does that. They could be going into a 16-bit register. How do you do a multiply in 11 clock cycles? That's very clever. So I've had to go back to sex. It only seems to work uh, when it's executing sex. So 1D, you've got a nice binary count there. And that means I can use a nice clickbaity title. Excellent. My channel. Do what I want. Cheerio.